Welcome back to San Diego Sports Leader Double X 1090, head coach Steve Fisher. Coach, as always, Dave and I can't thank you enough for the time. How long does it take you to decompress from a loss like that? When it ends, the finality of it uh, is startling because nobody expects not to be playing. And uh, you go through all the emotions that everybody has, and uh, eventually you come to the reality that the balls are put away and you start preparing yourself for next season. Uh, that's the way of the world and what we do. Coach, I'm just curious to know how it works for you as, as the guy that has brought these guys in. And it, basically, it is a family. And knowing the way you are, these guys are family for life. When uh, when you guys are in a situation like this and you have to get on that plane and you have to go home or if it's in the locker room, do you go to the guys that are, are seniors that just play their last game or do you go to the guys that you need to be strong for next year to learn off this experience to get them ready for the next season? Yes, both. Both. All of the above. Uh, not unlike after every game, uh, I we as coaches go around and give every player a handshake and a hug, and uh, this one uh, turned into a little bit longer hugs. And we made emphasis about Garrett Green, uh, who came and only played with us one year but was very instrumental, who's a senior, and in particular Tim Shelton, who's been with us for five years, who embodies the spirit and all the qualities that every coach hopes to have in in uh, young people that play for them. Uh, and Tim uh, was very emotional after the game, uh, and it's understandable, and we expect that. If you don't shed tears after a tough loss, especially after your last loss, then you're not as invested as you should be. So we, we talked about that, and uh, we lingered a little longer on, on the topic of those that won't be with us next year, but also talked with pride about what we, they had accomplished, and uh, then with a slight glimpse of what's forward. But most of it was a thank you and an appreciation for how hard and how successful all of the players, in particular the season, the seniors, had made this season. Coach, uh, talking to Coach Steve Fisher, we're Dave and Jeff on Double X 1090. Coach, one of the things I took away from Mark Ziegler's game article was he mentioned in your post-game comments how Jamal Franklin stood up right in the middle, and you, you joked that you thought he was going to walk out of the room, and instead he walks over to see Tim Shelton, followed by some teammates. A great moment for those of us that have enjoyed Tim Shelton's career. Who do you look at to step up to be that leader that Tim has been during his time here? Does that fall to Chase Tapley, Jamal Franklin? Could it be a combination as this team moves forward? Veterans should be your leaders, uh... For the new guys coming in, uh, they'll look to somebody within, not just the coaches, for how things should be done, how to handle themselves in good times, how to handle themselves in, in tough times, how hard they have to work, what they have to do when nobody uh, other than the players themselves realize there's work to be done. So it'll be a combination of everybody. Uh, what I'll do is what I've always done. Uh, uh, we will go through the spring. And then in the uh, summer, I will appoint uh, temporary captains. And then we'll see who, who will emerge as the leaders. And it doesn't have to be your seniors. But it, uh, in all probability, it, it will be. And in all reality, it should be. As far as your schedule goes, how does it work? How do you wind down? What do you do now until, uh, until it's time to start coaching again? Well... Surprising to most folks, we don't just uh, head off to Hawaii and come <laughs> back in October. There's work to be done. We have two young guys, uh, we're very proud to say, that will be playing in Sacramento in the state finals, state championship game. Uh, so we're going to go up to that. Then we have two weekends, the last two weekends of April, or open periods again to recruit. Uh, we'll be doing that, and all the while we'll be making sure that things are on the home front, taken care of. You know, Coach, one of those guys, Matt Trigley, who's a, who's a heck of a ball player, 6'6", six, six from La Costa. Um, where do you see him fitting in in your program? What position will he be playing? We recruit players, and I don't put numbers on them. Uh, you know, you don't have to be a one, two, or three. You're, if you're a player, you you find a way to get onto the floor, and that's what we've always done. Matt's a very athletic 6'6", uh, six, six wing player, 
that has the ability to play multiple spots, and those are the kinds of young men that I like. He's extremely competitive. He's led his high school team to the greatest season in the history of La Costa Canyon High School. So we're very much excited and looking forward to Matt. Uh, uh, Skyler Spencer from Price High School is also playing for a state championship. So we've got two young guys that uh, embody what it takes and also have what all of us like, and that's they come with a pedigree of winning. Talking to head coach Steve Fisher from your San Diego State Aztecs joins us on San Diego Sports Leader Double X 1090. Coach, how has recruiting changed over your time at San Diego State? Is the message easier to deliver with the recent success? Winning begets winning. When you win, it attracts. And uh, without question, when we bring a young uh, 17-year-old to our building with their families, they're immensely impressed. You can't not be. If you don't walk out of there with goosebumps, then we don't want you. So it helps. There's no question about it. Uh, we, uh, we've had a, a, a successful run, and we want to continue that. And everybody that plays wants to be a part of winning. And uh, we've done, I'm proud to say, uh, our share of that over the last few years. Coach, we were speaking in, uh, just a little bit ago as far as the seniors that are leaving the, the program and, and guys that you want to have a relationship with next year, at least on the court. Can you talk about as a head coach how it works? I mean, obviously, as we mentioned before, we use the word family and you, and, and I've had a, ch- a chance to talk to some of the guys that you've coached in the past that have made it the NBA that think so highly of you. You keep in uh, pretty good contact with the guys that you've coached at one time or another, or, or is it one of those they reach out to you, or do you reach out to them? Just kind of curious to know how the coach relationship works. There's there's some that you communicate with more than others, but you never, ever fail to reach out uh, at various times during the year or vice versa them to you when things happen, be it good, be it not so good. Uh, they're all on a mailing list. We stay in touch with them and their families. Uh, we want them to feel a part of their program, our program, because they've helped create what we've got. Uh, so it's neat to see guys come back, and we've talked about that, guys that showed up for various games, both home and away, guys that communicate not only with me but with every coach on our staff. And the, the nicest thing about it in the summer, not just because it's San Diego, they come back. They come back, they work out, uh, they have uh, a lifetime that will be – still fully invested with their school, San Diego State. Coach, when we talked to Ed Graney last week, he said he believed whoever won your game with NC State would be strong enough to beat Georgetown. He was exactly right. NC State wins that game. How good is the Wolfpack? How far can they go? They're very good. They're very talented. They're on a, they're on a high right now. They had to win four games in a row. And they lost a very, very close, uh, controversial, hard-fought game with North Carolina in the semifinals of their game. And they still didn't know whether they were getting in. So sometimes luck is involved. Very, very easily, Drexel could have been in instead of North Carolina State. And North Carolina State would have been in the NIT. They deserve to be in. But there are teams that deserve to be in that don't make it. So they got in. They got in on merit. But they got in a little bit on good fortune, and now they're making the most of it. They're immensely talented, uh, and they're playing that way right now. They've got size. They've got athleticism. They can score in a variety of ways, and they're playing that way. Uh, they're a very, very good team. Another 850 season tickets have been sold for Coach Fisher's program next year. Incredible where that program is, and it has easily become the hardest ticket in town to get. Coach, before we let you go, Dave and I do a question of the week. If you were not coaching college basketball, what do you think you'd be doing to make a living? Well, I have no idea. I could still be a high school math teacher back in the south suburbs of Chicago, be very happy, Uh, or I could be like all my friends right now that I started teaching with retired and living a good life. Uh, 
but I'm having a good time doing what I'm doing, so I haven't given much thought to doing anything else. Well, we sure have enjoyed it, Coach. We're sorry the the ending wasn't what we were looking for on Friday. doesn't take away what has been an incredible year. Dave and I have sure enjoyed talking to you the last couple of weeks. We'll keep... We'll keep it up, and uh, and we'll look forward to the future that looks brighter and brighter. Coach, congratulations to you and your team, and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, Chef Dave. Enjoy being on with you. Thank you.